sa ating uh, lahat sa umagang ito na muling makapagtipon para sambay ng pangalan ng ating dakilang Diyos. So simula, uh, kantayin po natin ang Him 139, 139. Sit tayo po tayong lahat.
nalangin po tayo. Uh, Lord, totoo nga po, kagaya ng aming kinanta, we are resting upon you. Sana nga po, eh, punuin nyo ang puso namin sa umagang ito ng kagalakan na makipagkita sa inyo. Nagpapasalamat kami na meron kaming isang araw sa linggong ito na maaring makipagkita sa inyo sa pagpuri at pagpapasalamat at pagpapakikinig ng inyong salita. Naway gabayan nyo kami sa buong araw na to at ingatan nyo pa po ang mga papunta pa po dito at si Pastor Mike din na siyang mangunguna sa amin sa Sunday School, bigyan nyo siya ng karunungan at naway sana nga eh, ang tinig ninyo ang aming marinig sa pamamagitan ng inyong lingkod. Ito'y lahat ay tinataas namin in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, magpapatuloy tayo ngayon sa ating pinag-aaralan sa maiksing uh, series lang naman ito na nais nice kong ibahagi which is regarding the theology of work. At, uh, uh, mararapat din talaga to kasi para sa atin dahil uh, karamihan sa atin ay nagtatrabaho sa mga opisina or even sa bahay dahil uso na rin yung mga home-based work. And in whatever area na kung saan work is involved, not necessarily the compensation. Uh, when we work, we speak of that labor na kung saan eh, binigyan tayo ng kapasidad ng Diyos na uh, gumalaw, kumilos, intellect upang gawin yung mga bagay. And uh, yun yung scope ng work na nakita natin sa mga nakaraan natin naging lesson. At uh, what we have uh, basically discussed una is yung what. No? We dealt with yung foundation, foundational principles na kung saan ang uh, work ay nakabase. And we have seen that it is an ordination and a, a mandate of God based even sa creation. And with that, we are guided na sa ating pamumuhay, sa ating pagtatrabaho, ay uh, ganun nga ang regard natin when it comes to work. And now, sa umagang ito, nais nice kong dulugan natin yung uh, paksa naman na nag a sa question na why. Okay? Yung why. Yung what, tapos na ngayon yung why, bakit, o ano yung reason, or the, what is the goal of work. Why work? Bakit natin kailangan magtrabaho? At para saan? Ano ba yung purpose layunin ng pagtatrabaho? And uh, tayo muna yung manalangin ang uh, hilingin natin tulong ng Diyos. Panginoon, salamat pong muli sa umagang ito na binigay niyo sa amin na makapatarito, makadulog uh, sa inyong presensya at uh, mabiyaan ng inyong presensya, O Diyos, sa pamagitan ng inyong salita. May you bless us throughout this full day. Grant us hearts that are humble and teachable, even prepared, O Lord, to meet with you and your people as well. So bless us with your presence this full day, even in this Sunday school hour, in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, intro, by way of introduction, last time, again, nakita natin, uh, uh, it takes root, yung work, no? The principle of work, it takes its root doon sa uh, garden, sa ordination ng Diyos upon creation. It's a creation mandate kasama ng marriage. Uh, the curse, uh, due to man's rebellion in sin, was not upon work itself. Hindi sinumpa yung work. Uh, kundi yung ground na kung saan magtatrabaho yung tao. So the quality of work is therefore affected by such curse. And the man's quality and the process of work has been difficult since then. Kasi yung sinabi kay Adan ay uh, from the sweat of your brows kayo, ikaw ay makakain. Umbaga. So by meaning is magtatrabaho ka, mag, 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 uh, magpapawis ka talaga. Uh, we can assume na previously before the curse, before the fall, eh, hindi uh, mahirap ang trabaho. And therefore, kaya nga merong uh, kasama ng curse na yun is merong uh, pagtubo ng mga thorns in thistles. Also, we learned that work continued even after the fall. Sa labas ng Eden, inutusan sila ng Diyos that He is to till the ground, He is to cultivate, and even to work. And even hanggang ngayon sa atin, the work, the principle of work remains. Also, the sanctity of work is the ground or basis for private property, yung acquiring of things. 
Yun yung pinaka-ground basis ng uh, pag-own ng property or even ng uh, mga gamit, material possessions ng uh, bawat sa atin. So it's grounded upon the sanctity of work. The fruit of man's labor, despite the difficulty involved, is to be enjoyed. Whether material reaping, may material reaping or none, it's to be enjoyed itself. Bagaman difficult. And then, as nakita din natin that idleness has no place in Christian ethics. It has no place in Christian ethics. Now, having laid itong foundation na ito, itong haya natin itong paksa natin na ngayon ng goal of work. And the, what is the goal or the purpose of work? And first, we have to look and understand that man's activity of labor is not to be separated with God in view. Kailangan nasa view palagi ng Christian, back ng buong tao, na pag nag-work ay dapat God is included. God is in view every time we labor with our hands. We, we do work. And each person's labor, therefore, is a divine calling. It's a divine vocation. And uh, Calvin, uh, John Calvin, sa kanyang institute, sinabi niya ito, no? The Lord commands us in all actions of life to regard His vocation. Uh, kasi siya yung nagtalaga nito. Therefore, to prevent universal confusion being produced by our folly and temerity, temerity meaning uh, parang excessive uh, self-confidence, magiging mapangahas, uh, He has appointed to all their particular duties in different spheres of life. Kaya nga iba-iba, meron tayong kapasidad, kakayanan, pinagkaloob ng Diyos sa atin. Every individual's line of life, therefore, is as it were a post assigned to him by the Lord. Ang Diyos ang nagtalaga sa atin kung nasaan tayo ngayon. That he may not wander about in uncertainty all his days. Malaking bagay yung work. You see, yung, yung idea ito is uh, it prevents idleness. Man is really to work. Ginawa yan ng Diyos at tinilaga ng Diyos. Now, while it is a given fact, gaya nang uh, discuss natin previously, that work is a means upon which God's providence, uh, uh, work daw mismo, ay uh, means ito, kaparaanan, na kung saan yung providensya ng Diyos, yung provisions ng Diyos ay dumarating sa atin sa pag-sustain ng ating life, whether it's food, shelter, or clothing, yung basic necessity natin, and even yung acquiring ng private properties, this must not be the ultimate end. Bagaman means ito ng Diyos para ma-acquire natin itong mga to, nang sa ganun makapagpatuloy tayo sa ating buhay. Primarily, makakain tayo. May malapag tayo sa hapagkainan. Uh, para sa atin, sa pamilya natin, and even acquiring of things. But this should not be the ultimate end. For we wake up, each gising tayo sa bawat araw natin na nagpa-participate sa mandate na ito. Pero hindi dapat yung goal, yung pinakalayunin, is the acquisition of things. There must be then a God-oriented motivation and direction sa lahat ng ating labor. And therefore, the overarching principle that governs this, as well as in all of life, is yung uh, sinabi ni Pablo sa 1 Corinthians 10.31. Sino nakaka-memorize nito? Kahit anong version. Okay. Whether then you eat or drink, and whatever you do, do all to or for the glory of God. Yan yung overarching principle that applies in particular then sa labor. Kasi it entails doing something. So, the most basic na kailangan ng tao, eating and drinking, even from there, eh, we are to regard God in His glory. How much more sa labor? How much more sa labor? Also, see si Romans 14, verse 7 to 8, na kung saan ang sinabi doon, For not one of us lives for himself, and not one dies for himself. For if we live, we live for the Lord. Or if we die, we die for the Lord. Whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. Okay? So, merong mindset, again, of that consideration na kabahagi kasama ang Diyos sa lahat ng aspeto ng bagay, but in this case, in particular, sa ating labor. Therefore, 
to remove or uh, disregard God and His glory as the primary goal and motive for our work is the cause or is the root for all types of perverted views and motives for work. Yan ang simula, yan ang ugat, when we disregard God, pag inalis natin sa eksena ang Diyos, that's the root cause na kung saan ang uh, perverted view patungkol sa work, even yung motives ay pumapasok. No? And then you could ask yourself this morning, bakit ba ako nagtatrabaho? Di ba sabi nga sa commercial, para kanino ka bumabangon o pumigising? Okay? Para kanino ka bumabangon? Mag-work. Well, yes, for the family and all those things. But ultimately, ultimately, yung puno ay yung uh, sukdulang layunin, overarching principle is what? Okay? Huwag tayong madistract. Now, Solomon's observation presents this very truth upon his observation of life, especially sa work that is devoid of a recognition of God in His glory. No? Binanggit ni Solomon, in his observation sa life, particularly sa work, ito yung observation ni Solomon. Punta tayo sa Ecclesiastes chapter 2. It's worth going to and looking at. Ecclesiastes 2, medyo bibilisan ko lang po ito, no? At, uh, there would be verses na may ipa-flash ko dyan that you should take down na lang and din natin madadaanan. But in this case, daanan natin itong Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 17, 18, and 20, and particularly verse 25. 17, it says there, sabi ni Solomon, So I hated life. Why? For the work which had been done under the sun was grievous to me. Bigat. Kabigatan. Pabigat lang to. Because everything is futility in striving after wind. Realize na yun. Upon his observation of life under the sun, nawala ang consideration sa Diyos. It's, it, it is futile. This I hated, verse 18, all the fru- uh, thus I hated all the fruit of my labor for which I had labored under the sun. Okay, sabi natin nga, dapat ini-enjoy natin yung fruits ng ating labor. Pero sabi niya rito, I hated yung fruit ng labor that I did under the sun. For I must leave it to the man who will come after me. Kasi makikinabang nito. Pag namatay ako, hindi ako. May ibang makikinabang nito. And who knows whether he will be a wise man or a fool. Yet he will have control over all the fruit of my labor for which I have labored by acting wisely under the sun, this too is vanity. Verse 20, Therefore, I completely despaired of all fruit of my labor for which I had labored under the sun. And again, reminder, sinasabi ni Solomon to as an observation, pag ang labor ay tinitingnan na kung saan ginagawa, na walang kinalaman sa Diyos. It's all the here and now. In verse 25, For who can eat and who can have enjoyment without him without God. See, the source of our joy in labor is not labor in itself or even the fruit of labor, but God. But God. Okay? So the goal is, the ultimate goal in every aspect ng buhay, and particularly sa labor, is God and His glory. Having a regard for that. Therefore, uh, because we are to live and work to the glory of God in mind, with the glory of God in mind, we have new responsibility ngayon sa ating labor to be diligent and be honest. Hindi, hindi lang tayo pa bara-bara. Yung Pilipino, sadly, is known for quality na ganun. Yung pwede na. Pwede na yan. Hindi naman pang export yan eh. Since Pastor Alex, yung mga taga-pesa rito yun. Yan. Hindi yung pang-export yan eh. Okay lang yan. Local consumption. Pwede na yan. Tanggap na mga Pinoy yan. Okay? Uh, but as a Christian, our labors should be diligent and an honest labor. Martin Luther, or at least sa kanya in-attribute yung statement na to, and I paraphrase, sabi niya, the Christian shoemaker is not supposed to put small crosses sa mga shoes na ginagawa niya. But rather, he should do his work diligently and with excellence. Why? Because God loves excellence. That's it. Hindi kailangan maglagay ng cross. Christian worker ako, kailangan may cross dito. No. Do your work in an excellent manner. Why? Because you have a master in heaven whom you want to please, not just men. Okay? So he was wise in saying that, or at least 
Sino man yung nag-quote na yun. So, therefore then, having this understanding ng goal of Christian, or of labor, let us go to the next part. No? The danger, ano ngayon ang problema pag na-miss natin yung true goal, yung, yung, yung totoong goal ng work. Kasi doon mapupunta eh. If it's either you have the right mindset, understanding of kung ano yung labor, para saan tayo nag-work, or not. And the danger is uh, stated dito, may dalawang bagay na gusto, gustong i-highlight, na ito yung prominently na nangyayari once a person, a worker, Christian or not, uh, uh, misses yung part, misses yung mark of the true goal of labor or work. Una-una, the danger of materialism. The danger of materialism. What is materialism? No, It is one of the most common perversion of the end goal of or motivation uh, of work. That's materialism. Man has replaced God as his ultimate good and pleasure with material things. The worldview, materialism in a nutshell, is the worldview that emphasizes and gives primacy, priority, uh, mas mataas na lugar at puwang sa pag-accumulate ng material things and the pursuit of pleasure. Okay? Uh, the pursuit of pleasure, the pursuit of wealth and things is considered as its ultimate, ultimate and highest good. In fact, kaya ngang hedonism sa materialism go hand in hand. Hedonism is the view na kung saan ay yung ultimate goal really is pleasure. Anything na maghihinder, anything na magiging hadlang sa kasiyahan ko, personal pleasure ko, ay dapat tratuhin ko something negative. Away with the negativity in life. Okay? I deserve pleasure and enjoyment. That's hedonism. Okay? Ang ultimate end, ang ultimate goal mo is pleasure. And paano mo kuha yung pleasure na yun? By things, mostly. Acquiring of things. Now, we have to take notice yung warning ni Jesus sa Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 to 20. And somebody, can somebody read Matthew 6, verse 19 to 21. Okay, thank you. The warning of Jesus here really is that uh, not necessarily in itself yung storing up of treasures on earth. Okay? Kailangan maging maingat tayo doon. Kasi sabi niya dyan, verse 21, for where treasure is, there your heart will be also. Okay? So madadaan natin mamaya. But that's, that's put that in perspective, itong uh, warning na binigay ni Jesus when it comes to the accumulation do not just store up for yourselves treasures on earth. Na kung saan, these are all material and destructible. But rather, store up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Where, or the heavenly things, things that are not susceptible to decay. Na hindi na sisira. Okay? And, on the other hand, it is worth noting then that the extreme uh, opposite of this idea ng uh, materialism, extreme materialism, is uh, yung idea na yung spiritual na mga bagay lang ang merong uh, value at dapat nating habulin. Okay? That's another extreme, opposite view ng, uh, when it comes to material things. Na ito lang yung mga spiritual na bagay lang are worth pursuing in life. Uh, as if yung mga material aspect and things na nasa mundong ito ay uh, evil at dapat iwasan at i-reject. So that's the other extreme view na yung mga spiritual lang na mga bagay. In fact, that's where yung mga uh, monastic, monastic movements ay nagkamali. At uh, ang pagkakaakala nila at pagkakaintindi, Eh dahil, uh, you have to give credit in that they want to become godly. 
They want to, they desire, you know, holiness. Pero ang kanila naging move was to move away sa city kasi nandito yung kasalanan. Nandito yung mga material things. So, let us detach ourselves and just concentrate on spiritual things. Let's go to the mountains. They forget na yung sinabi ni Jesus dito and even sa Mark chapter 7. Everywhere they go, yung puso nila kasama nila. Okay? And the heart where every evil thing comes and flows out of. In Colossians chapter 20, 2.20 to 23, you can read that along na lang. Uh, Paul mentions and warns yung danger din ng asceticism, yung elementary principles of this world. Na sinasabi niya tulad, do not touch, do not taste, do not look. As if ito yung magiging basis ng katuwiran ko. Ito yung magiging basis ng kabanalan ko sa pag-iwas sa mga bagay lang na material. Okay? That's another extreme perspective. Now, the Bible, however, rejects both extreme positions. Although material things are not the highest possible good to pursue, it is neither fundamentally evil in and of itself. Kaya nga sabi ni Paul kay Timothy, 1 Timothy 6.17, part of that, his instructions to the rich, eh, ano, sa Diyos nang gagaling lahat, it's God who richly supplies the things that we may enjoy and delight in. Okay? And again, doon nagkamali ang uh, monastic movement and yung mga ascetic movements. They miss the whole point in this area. Now, we must remember then that in both Old Testament, in New Testament, God's redemptive promises to believers relate to the creation. Matthew 5.5, dinaanan natin. Sino nakakaalala? Tinuro ni Pastor Oli, Beatitudes. Matthew 5.5. Blessed. Okay, may first word. Check. Arda? Sige, sino mag, pwede magbasa na lang. Matthew 5.5 5. Blessed are the meek. Why? Anong inheritance nila? The earth. Anong earth yon? Spiritual earth. Earth, earthan lang to. Why is it this, this earth? When we're talking about, you know, renewed heavens, yes. Pero what, even though, what does that entail? It entails the material aspect. Okay, kasama sa inheritance ng mga citizens ng kingdom ng Diyos is the inheritance of this earth, of this world. Remember when the new new Jerusalem, new Jerusalem, new heavens and new earth comes when God does his work of renovation. Is that, you know, we we see the picture of heaven coming down, God's dwelling amongst these people. Where Kaya minsan, no, kailangan makorek din yung view natin na pag iisip natin na uh, uh, pagdating ni Jesus, dadali niya tayo lahat sa clouds, sa langit, doon tayo titira sa mga clouds. No. You read Revelation and you read yung, uh, that's another topic, eschatology of things, you know, this is going to be better than Eden. The situation will be perfect. No more inclination sa sin. No more of those things. So, it involves even yung redemption and renovation of this physical world. Romans 8, 20, 22. Hindi ko na ilagay dyan. And even yung pinag natin sa 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 13. That renovation na kung saan na mangyayari of this physical world. Sa so Romans 8, the whole creation groans for the redemption of the sons of man. Because kasama ang buong creation sa pagbalik ni Jesus na magkakaroon ng uh, quote-unquote redemption, ng pagbabago talaga na mangyayari. Now, the point, uh, this denotes then that this world, this material world, is not a throwaway. It's not a throwaway. Uh, while we look above and beyond this world towards God as our highest good, Colossians 3 verse 1 to 2, He promised eternal presence in glory his promise of uh, yung presensya niya of eternal glory involves this material world sa pagbalik niya muli. You know, after all, even now, this is God's world. This is God's universe. 
There's a usurpation na nangyari after nung fall. Hence, we see yung temptation kay Jesus, yung promise ni Satan, yung pangako niya raw, na as if sa kanya tong mundong ito, the world of man perhaps, but what we can see in all of scriptures is that Jesus is king over all. This is his world. Don't treat this world as a throwaway. Okay? Kasi magiging monastic tayo sa kabilang dako, both extremes. So, ang point here is, we should have a careful and a sanctified mind. Uh, it is needed for us in order to have a ba- balanced view of these truths. Merong corresponding dangers ang parehong view na ito. Extreme side, materialism. Other extreme, uh, you know, spiritualism lang. As if hindi kasama yung material aspect. Be personally careful of both extremes as well as imposing on uh, or lording it over the conscience of others. Kadalasan nangyayari yan. Nagiging legalistic na lang. Kaya nga yung mga principles na, oh, uh, wag, wag, kay, wag kang manood ng uh, sine, wag kang ganito, wag ganyan. These are all in relevance when it comes to uh, uh, legalistic standards. No? When it comes to holiness. Ano ba yung mga dapat gawin? And when we're talking about work, the danger of materialism is there. Equally then, the danger din ng spiritualism lang. Remember that God has ordained labor with the corresponding reward and delight in the fruit of one's labor. Kung tama yung pananaw natin of what the end goal of labor is. Kailan ba natin iisipin yung end goal ng labor? Sa huling araw na? Or every day sa paggising natin? Kung tayo itatrabaho, papasok sa swelahan, pupunta sa bakura natin upang magdilig, magbungkal ng lupa, magagardening, maglalaba tayo, maghuhugas ng pinggan, maglilinis ng sahig, ng kisame, ng, ng kubeta. The glory of God is in view. Mind you, brethren, sa bawat ginagawa natin. Okay? But in this case, yung danger ng materialism when it comes to uh, labor na merong profit ay kailangan natin pag-ingatan. Okay? The furthermore, the mindset on materialism affects one's view on wealth. Kayamanan. Yan yung kadugtong nitong materialism. So that's the second danger na kailangan pag-ingatan natin. Just talking about yung major, no? Marami mga dangers na kakabit nitong mga to when it comes to uh, missing the goal of work, the ultimate goal ng work, which is the glory of God. Now, there's a danger of wealth. I didn't say the evil of wealth. Okay? The danger of wealth. Now, diniscuss natin last time then that God designed labor in such a way that man benefits. May binipisyo ito sa, ta- sa tao, sa atin sa ating paglabor, sa ating pagtoil. Even after the curse, it involves ownership of material property. No? Compensation. May, merong katapat, may kapalit sa pagtatrabaho, sa paglilabor mo. Na means ng Diyos para tayo ay mabuhay. Given. Okay? Ang issue often ay nagkakaro- nagkakaroon ng issue madalas ay uh, when the laborer in his labor receives or accumulate such material goods in abundance and becomes wealthy beyond the level of necessity. I didn't say sin, but issue. Doon minsan nagkakaroon ng issue. Okay? Sa pag-accumulate ng wealth, ng material goods. It arises dahil yung laborer, dahil masipag. Isn't that y- yung, yung uh, kalimitan talaga din na mangyayari? Although not absolute, Pero kung isang tao ay nagiging masinop, masipag sa kanya ginagawa, yung tendency, yung ideal na situation is, you know, he will be prosperous. But again, we live in a fallen world where these ideals often do not happen. But in that case, na ang tao ay merong abundance or even inheritance, no? na mana niya mula sa magulang, tulad ng sinabi ko na sa Ecclesiastes, may kayamanan, nalikom niya to. And, Given na itong mga paggawa niya, pag-labor niya, pag-accumulate ng ito, ay hindi niya nakuha through corrupt means, hindi sa illegal na paraan, hindi sa deceit, hindi exploitation, at uh, hindi sa oppression or power tripping, 
Rather, because of diligent and honest labor and even inherited goods, the question now is this. Is it evil or sinful to be in such circumstance na kung saan meron kang accumulated wealth? Is it evil? Are we permitted to earn and keep more than we need? Is it evil? Unang tanong. And are we permitted to earn and keep more than we need? Sinatin natin more than we need, eh higit pa doon sa uh, kikitain natin para makapag-sustain ng ating ikabubuhay. Food, shelter, clothing, basic needs. Is it wrong or are we permitted to earn or to accumulate above that? Permitted. Kapot yung iba. Minsan, no, na, na, ano tayo, parang masama yata yan kasi it's not evil, okay? Is it evil or sinful and are we permitted? And the answer is, the possessions of wealth is not condemned in scriptures. Una-una, no? If we could have a look sa narrative ng scriptures, it is not condemned. Remember, it is God who supplies richly, abundantly things that we can and should enjoy. Kung alam natin saan nanggagaling to at kung nire-regard natin kanino nanggagaling ito. It is God who supplies all things in His providence and even common grace both to the wicked and to the righteous. Okay? So that's a, a general answer. Now, we see examples sa Bible of righteous men na pinagpala ng Diyos in this area. We can go and start with, we um, can say Noah. Abraham, Job, no, uh, well, David, Solomon, they were kings. Uh, Joseph, okay, he he became in he he, were, he was put in a position na kung saan he he was able to accumulate wealth. It comes with the with the job. It comes with the title na meron siya, okay? Uh, hindi siya naging corrupt doon. Joseph, so New Testament, may naisip kayo? Sabi mo sa Zacchaeus. <laughs> Sinuli niya nga karamihan eh, dahil alam niya sa korap galing yun eh. Meron ba kayo naisip sa New Testament na Zacchaeus? I mean, righteous ha? Righteous accumulation of wealth. Si Lydia, no? As a businesswoman, seller of purples. High-end yung clientele ni Lydia. Royal people. Dahil sa kanyang uh, seller of purple. Meron pa iba? Naisip nyo? Si Luke, hindi natin alam. Bagaman doktor siya, hindi natin alam kung mataas yung bayad sa doktor noon o maliit. Kung maniningil siya ng PF na sobrang mahal. We don't know. Pero baka. It's a dignified uh, position noon. Meron pa yung naisip? New Testament. New Testament na. New Testament. Remember nung kamatayan ni Jesus? Si Joseph, Joseph, Joseph of Arimathea, right? And hindi uh, naman niya binraso, but then sabi niya, eto, may sobra akong ano, uh, property ko. And uh, there was wealth involved at many others, baka hindi natin na, ano lang, nakita masyado. However, scriptures warn us of the danger of covetousness. So settle tayo. Accumulation of wealth is not sinful or evil, provided just and honest means ang pag-accumulate, or even inheritance. Even with yung uh, uh, accumulating wealth or more than we need, hindi rin kinundem sa scriptures. Right? Ito yung problem. Scriptures warn us heavily, I would like to add, heavily uh, on the danger of covetousness and greed that is fueled by the love of money that comes with and is often associated associated with wealth or the pursuit of wealth at uh, 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 pursuit of it as it imposes severe temptations okay again ang issue just like materialism puso okay and here are verses regarding uh, covetousness that give us a, a glimpse of what the scriptures say and uh First Corinthians 10, I'll just look ng uh, isa-tig-isang verses na lang siguro para mabilis. And uh, 1 Corinthians 
Uh, wait, geton lang. Sa Colossians 5 na lang. At 3 verse 5. Para mas mabigat yung dating. Therefore, consider the members of your earthly body as ano ba to? As uh, dead to immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed. Dalawa na to. Which amounts to idolatry. No? Yung sa uh, Colossians 3.5. And uh, it really also is connected with COVID being covetous or covetousness. Greed, covetousness, the love of money. 1 Timothy 6 verse 10. And the love of money is the root of all evil. Same is true with 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 13 na napag-aaral natin previously na yung uh, danger even sa office bearer ng pagiging deacon or even pastorate of uh, being warned to stay from such love of money. And it is no wonder that Jesus reflects yung reality nito sa Mark 10:23. Ano yung Mark 10:23? Yung nakakaalam. Mark 10.23 is the rich young ruler. Especially verse 25. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of the needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Hindi sinabing uh, imposible para sa isang mayaman na makapasok sa kaharian ng Diyos Pero sinasabi lang yung difficulty involved because of the temptations of covetousness, greed, and materialism. Also, Paul commands Timothy, again, 1 Timothy 6, 17 to 19. I think this is worth looking at 1 Timothy 6, 17. And this is the warning again uh, for the rich or instructions. Instruct those who are rich in this present world. Not to be conceited or to fix their hope in uncertainty of riches, but on God, who richly supplies us with all things to enjoy and instruct them to do good, to be rich in good works, to be generous and ready to share, storing up for themselves the treasure of good foundation for the future. Okay? Uh, ibig sabihin lang dito, eh, Paul gives Timothy that hint, or by implication, na yung tendency ng riches, or even dun sa mga wealthy, that they are to be conceited ng tiwala nila ay sa kanilang kayamanan at hindi sa Diyos. And even in their uh, goodness, sa kanilang good works, eh, may tendency na maging stingy o maging maramot o maging kuripot when it comes sa tulong or even storing up merely earthly treasures. Gaya nung sabi ni Jesus sa Matthew 6. And also the parable of the rich fool sa Luke Uh, chapter 12, verse 16 and following. Ano yung kwento naman ng rich fool, right? Nung uh, yung kanyang uh, barn ay napuno, ay sabi niya, alam ko na, gigibain ko yung iba ko para sa ganun ay uh, mas marami pa may imbak. At sasabihin ko sa aking kaluluwa, uh, ay magsaya ka na lang. Okay? Uh, dahil puno ka na eh. Okay ka na. Ang sagot ka na, Diyos, you fool. You fool. So, yung preoccupation sa pag-accumulate ng riches. So, you see in danger, yun na yung nagiging ultimate goal. Again, nothing wrong with wealth or having it even in excess sa needs. Pero kung ang puso natin ay hindi tumutugma sa naayon, ang danger, ang tendency is really idolatry. It becomes an idol. Nevertheless, those who are not wealthy naman, the poor and the needy can also get caught up with the fall, uh, with the uh, uh, and fall in covetousness and greed. Bakit? Sa kanilang pursuit ng riches. No? Hindi nila maabot-abot, kaya yun na lang yung pinakasukdulang goal nila. Ang hangarin ko lang sa buhay ay yumaman talaga kasi pag yumaman ako, kasaya at aayos ang buhay namin. So yun ay nagiging pursuit in life. Just as it is easy for the rich man to confuse priorities, so it is with the poor. So it is with the poor. And yun yung sinabi dun sa verse 9 ng 1 Timothy 6. But those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a snare. Many foolish and harmful desires which plunge men into ruin and destruction. Why? For the love of money is the root of all 
evil. So, yan ang root cause, really. The point is, the root cause for such soul-endangering bent lies in the very heart of every man, whether rich or poor. Whether rich or poor. Yes, yung danger sa materialism ay nandudon malaki sa may mga kakayanan. But nonetheless, both men, both rich and poor. And uh, I'd like to end with this quote ni uh, John Murray. No? By the way, uh, that is why there are abundant warnings and exhortations to flee covetousness, greed, and the love of money rather than to pursue the gain of godliness that is accompanied by contentment. Okay? Contentment. So mag-ingat daw tayo. Dyan. And uh, I would like to leave the, with a quote na sinabi ni John Murray sa kanyang libro, Principles of Conduct, hindi ko na ilagay. We are at the heart of biblical ethic. No? The lust for wealth is covetousness. And covetousness is idolatry. Hindi na nagpaligoy-ligoy. It is idolatry. Why? And not only uh, are we at the heart of ethics then, kung ganun ang kalagayan, since we're talking about idols, we are the heart of religion. Okay? We are at the heart of religion itself. Now, in conclusion, work as ordained uh, was ordained and mandated by God with worship of Him in view. We are to work with God with uh, God and His glory in mind. So, importante, no? Yung end goal dapat ng work natin, kumikilos tayo, nagtatrabaho tayo, dapat, no? In all godliness, kasama ito sa ating pag-iisip. Especially tayo mga Kristiyano. Especially kung ikaw ay nakakilala sa Diyos. So dapat tama yung pananaw natin when it comes to work. We miss the mark of the ultimate goal of work when we are fixated and consumed in the fruits of labor or our labor. And ito yung tanong kanina dun sa kay John Murray. No? Materialism is cultivated in the seedbed of a covetous heart. And covetous, a covetous heart is an idolatrous heart. Why? Because it rejects God as the ultimate good and the object of delight and replaces Him with mere stuff. That's why it's idolatry. In application, work. Let's labor. Let's toil. In your respective callings, kung saan kayo nilagay ng Diyos, let's work, let's toil. And uh, with the high view of God and His glory, habang ginagawa natin itong mga gawain na ito. Pray then, therefore, upon every waking moment, sa pagising natin, as God gives us breath, life, and health, na bigyan tayo ng biyaya ng Diyos at kakayanan na matulungan na magtrabaho para sa Kanyang kaluwalhatian. It's easier said than done. Oh, I work for God's glory. Pero pag nandudo na tayo sa mga mesa natin, madaling mawala yun. We need God's grace then. Kasi we are commanded with such. Now, think and enjoy God's goodness in His provisions with delight and contentment. Kung ano yung pinuprovide ng Diyos sa atin, with contentment, let's enjoy and delight. And keep an eye over your own hearts that you may not be preoccupied by the pursuit of material gain or wealth only to consume it in your own lust. Guard your hearts, brethren, from this kind of idolatry. So check whether your hearts have already been consumed by such idolatry. And, you know, you can ask, do the things, pleasures, acceptance, and the praise of this world occupy my heart and mind mostly rather than God, the things of God, and His Word? Sana ay uh, makapagbigay sa atin ito ng kamulatan at tulong sa ating mga kanya-kanyang pagtatrabaho. Whether ito ay trabaho para kumita or we work kahit sa bahay, sa mga chores natin, na kung kadalasan talaga ay walang kapalit. But do we enjoy it thinking that it's glorifying to God? Okay? So let's be mindful of that. So I think we have still have a few minutes. Uh, any questions? Um, unahan ko na lang kayo, baka may tanong nyo eh. Lord willing, next meeting,
ay discuss naman natin, ito na yung how, ay ito yung why, discuss natin yung how. Okay? Yung how. So, meron tayong what, meron ng why, meron ng yung how, Lord willing. Okay? Pastor Alex, may tanong. Sasagutin ni Pastor Oli. Ah, dun sa, dun sa susunod. Labor unions daw. Dun sa, dun babagsak sa how. Dun sakali. Buti na lang. <laughs> we, we deal more, more mostly, although kasi ito magkakakabit-kabit to, no? Um, when we're working with the glory of God in view, uh, kasama yun dun sa isa sa mga tanong eh. Anong dapat ang view natin sa mga workers union or even capitalism? Okay? So may mga views kasi when it comes to that. Kasama mga Marxism eh. Uh, in all that. Pero sana, hindi tayo mas stuck lang din doon. Pero ang gusto natin ma-derive dito in the theology of work is the so what. Ano dapat pong gawin sa kanya-kanyang opisina o larangan na nilagay sa akin ng Diyos? How will I be able to apply this? Yes, we can discuss yung mga, mga side issues na yan. Hopefully, matapos natin next week. Okay? So, yun dun sa, sa how. Sa how yun. Lord willing. Meron pa po. Kung wala na, ay uh, manalangin tayo. Let's pray. Panginoon Diyos, salamat na kayo po ang nagtakda, naglathala ng labor, ng work. And this is glorifying sa inyong harapan. And you have given us life and breath uh, nang sa ganun ay makaya na namin magmasustain ang life. This is a means from you. Uh, even to us na sa mga karamihan din na nagtatrabaho na hindi naman necessarily para sa uh, profit. But Lord, help us in every aspect ng work. Gawin namin ito ng may pagtingin at pagtingala sa inyo na kayo ang siyang maluwalhati sa aming ginagawa. Therefore, eh, tulungan niyo po kami magkaroon ng tamang pananaw at maiwas kami sa mga kasalanan na associate dito kung paano kami dapat magtrabaho. Eh, sana o Diyos, uh, yeah, tulungan niyo bawat isa sa rito sa MCBC. That MCBC would indeed be a workforce of godly and good and diligent, excellent workers for your glory and for your namesake. In Jesus' name, Amen.